How has Heidegger's philosophy influenced your professional ambition? Martin Heidegger published a book in 1928 called Being in Time. His philosophy really changed the way that we think about how we, you know, intersect or interact in the world. Up until that point, most philosophers, Western philosophers, believed in what Descartes said, that I think, therefore I am. My thinking actually substantiates my being. Martin Heidegger said, that is a way for us to assess the world. I am a subject, the t table is an object, and it, it's, it exists outside of me. Martin, Martin Heidegger said, yes, that is an interesting way to assess the world, but there's another way to assess the world, that in fact, um, I am, therefore I think, that my being actually substantiates my thinking. And that was, that was a huge, huge uh, change for people, that in fact existence, right, how we show up in the world, is, is important. We would all intuitively agree with that. Mm -hmm. However, Western philosophy up, up until that point, you know, subject-object, really is what produced science, right? Um, and so nobody could refute the fact, and so we absolutely need that approach to look at the world, but I think particularly in the domain of services, services where you really want to delight people and you want to take advantage of two human beings you know, working together to try to solve a problem. Yeah. The subject-object definitions don't help. I see. Okay, now they do obviously help if you have to measure your capabilities, no question about that. But you need to measure the commitments that people are making. If somebody makes a promise that they're gonna be there at 2.30, well then we need to, you know, as a service provider, I need to make sure that my people are keeping promises. Yeah. So what, I'm, what, what, what we're looking to do is design right, experiences that actually allow people to negotiate and keep their promises. Now, in terms of my ambition, I believe that, um, that there's a new emergence, a new sort of mood that people are bringing to business. Uh, one about, you know, some being sincere about taking care of customers. I, th I, I live in Europe at the moment, uh, and I just came back to New York this weekend, and I have to say the service experience in New York is, is fabulous, particularly when compared to, with the service experience in Europe. And uh, what, what, what really is interesting about um, Heidegger's you know, a, approach and, and uh, really way of looking at the world is he includes mood in how we assess the world. And in fact, moods grab us. Yeah, they do. Right? And so that's really how I want you know, our service technicians, when they walk into a retailer or walk into a branch, right, that they in fact bring a mood with them, right? To some extent, they're a hero, right? They're here to really help solve a problem. Yeah. Uh, particularly, you know, what NCOR does is we're the lifeblood of our communities, right? Yeah. We're, we're keeping ATM machines up and running, right, keeping them full of cash. We're keeping our cash registers. Um, you know, operating and with very, very high availability. We're keeping our DVD kiosks up and running. We're keeping, you know, airports in terms of dispensing um, our online tickets, you know. Uh, so, so, you know, we really help, you know, enable the world. That's right. uh, and unfortunately, how we have negotiated our contracts have been through the, these SLAs. And quite honestly, it, it actually removes any opportunity for negotiation at the line level. Okay. And here we have our most talented, you know, most intelligent people, and we're not taking advantage of that capability because we have to have a standard, right? We basically say the service experience has to be standardized. So you can, it's like a Henry Ford's Model T. You can have it any color you want as long as it's black. 